It's great day to live. Praise be to the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and to the Almighty Father, our Most High God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your consistent, constant, and unending love. And thank you so much as well for leading us, directing us, and giving us personal day-to-day -day instruction so that our pathways will be always secured. Thank you that you are preserving us. May you receive all the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus Christ's name. And everyone said, Amen. The title of our message today is Waiting and Seeking Till We Receive. Waiting and seeking till we receive. So, waiting, seeking, receiving. The will of God is for all of us to receive. Because God always gives. No human being or all creation can ever, can ever outgive God. God is always giving. God is always generous. And God is always the source of all our provision, our supplies, and even our need. He will always meet our need. People are so bothered by so many things. And people also... In their mind, they are uh, uh, so much disturbed. And if people will only make God his priority, then many sadness, many frustration, many despair can be avoided. It is always... God first. In Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. First thing first. And seeking is the first thing that we are commanded to do its waking moment every day. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It is uh, combined. Combined place and character. Kingdom of God, righteousness. Kingdom of God is a territory Whereas righteousness is an attitude or character. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So it's not the kingdom only, but as well as righteousness. And to have righteousness, we have to believe Jesus Christ. So when we believe Jesus Christ, then righteousness is in us. Because Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God. So first thing first. Seek ye first. Not second, but first. And there is a reward. And all these things shall be added unto you. So God always provides. And he is always, and he is the only source of all our provision, supplies, and need. And his will is that he will 100% provide, supply, and meet our need. And each one of us must decide that God is on our side, that God is loving, that God is kind, that God is compassionate, that God will always bless us. All these things shall be added unto you. There will be always addition if we keep on seeking. So we have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and there will be addition. 
There are three things that I want to present to all of us. Number one is personally know your calling. Do and stick to it. Many are lazy and many are not attaining to the fullness of what God planned because they don't understand their calling and in the absence or ignorance of the call people will go in every direction and the sure way to failure is broken focus and there will be no fixed focus without first knowing his personal call i have discovered my personal call i stick to it and i continue doing it because i know my personal call but before we can understand the personal call first we should know the general the general call the total desire and design of god for all of creation and he desired that all of creation will be for his honor, for his glory, for his pleasure. So I, for one, is part of that creation. And you are also part of the creation of God. And our, the purpose and the intention of God in creating us is to give him honor, praise, and glory. We have to always have an inventory of our life are we doing his desire are we pleasing to him are we honoring him and glorifying him all the time because there will be no time wasted and to glorify him we need to live in his presence and in his presence, there is conversation with him and us. And mostly, people replace the presence of God because the presence of God, we will spend time in fellowship, in relationship, and in conversation. And because most people don't understand the presence of God, so they replace the presence of God by watching television, by doing uh, uh, so other activities, just to feel that they are recognized. The presence of God is our spending time with Him alone. The presence of God is necessitated by our need, our problems, our troubled mind when we don't understand what we are going to do in something that uh, happened because of our misjudgment and miscommunication sometimes. So we arrive at a wrong decision and we faltered and failed. And at failures, it will be a time of worry. So what are we going to do to know the personal calling in that general call? What is our calling in that total and general call of God for all of mankind, humanity, and creation? So again, if you will not know and if you will not try doing something to know, there are uh, several emotions. We are sometimes angry. We are sometimes sad. We are sometimes emotional. Sometimes we are bitter. Sometimes we are unforgiving. And those feeling and sentiments 
if not controlled, will do much damage to our not only personality but as well as our physical body. So for us to protect our life and our physical body, we have to know our personal calling. And we have to do it and stick until we completed it. In Jeremiah, so we understand that there is a reward. Things will be added to us. And that addition is whatever we need, it shall be added to us. Where we are lacking, then it shall be filled up. Because that is the promise. As long as we continue on the first priority of our existence, seeking first the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God. And as I have mentioned a while ago, that the righteousness is not our own. It is not as who made the righteousness, but it is Jesus. So righteousness is a gift and we receive it. And continue on believing that we are clothed with the righteousness of God. So in Jeremiah 29, 11, let us see some, some gem of this truth about the personal calling. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. So on the last part of this verse 11, to give you an expected end. Expected end. So the word expected is hoping. The word expected is what we are waiting. The word expected is what we believe that we shall have later. And that expected end is in the mind of God. Glory. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. So that expected end is the intention of God for all of his people. So the intention of God and it is in his mind that he desired that you will have a good future. So, what is that good future? Do you know what the good future is? So, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. So, let us now scrutinize and study the thoughts of peace and the thoughts of evil. Never will God think of any evil things. And never will God allow evil things to happen to his people. So if evil thing comes in the life of somebody, it is because he doesn't know the thoughts of God. And at first, the thoughts of God is not clear. That is why for all of us to remain steadfast in our faith, we have to believe what we don't understand. That is faith. We have to believe what we don't understand because as we believe, then we shall understand. We shall believe what do not see. We do not see. And as long as we believe, then what we don't see will be seen. It is continue on, continue on believing, 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 believing. And one day, the thoughts of God will be a reality and you can handle it, you can use it. So, you must be a faithful person. A person full of faith. So, the thoughts of peace is this. A person worry much because of 
Several things. Lack of money or sometimes no money. Lack of education because of lack of money. Not too good health because of poor diet. Because lack of not money. And inside the family, everyone quarrel almost daily because of the problem of money. Vices crops up because members of the family think of good things but they don't know how to come to hold on to the good things. And the people will only come to God. We will go back again to the first priority of our creation to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Now, we shall seek for the thought of God. So you can add up to these thoughts of peace. So, God desired for all of us to be wise. So when a person is wise, he is peaceful. Because he will understand that after the storm, good things. He understands that after failure, success. After pain, relief. So that is wisdom. That is why Paul said, for all things work together for good. For those who are called and for those who love him. So I know my calling, therefore I love him. Or to be exact, I love him. Oh, to be exact, he loved me, so I love him. So I found my calling. Hallelujah. So without finding the calling, a person will go throughout his life without achieving any good thing. So the thoughts of peace is that he doesn't want that we shall be sick. So when we have a good health, we are at peace at night. We can sleep quite well. No bothersome pain caused by arthritis. No bother some pain because of overweight. No bother some pain because of cold weather. Because our immune system will be always strong. And the calling known to us will be the one that will make us wise, healthy, whoo, glory, and wealthy. So, we need to know the calling of God. And let us use some example as I have made myself as a testimony. I found my calling and I do it and until now doing it more better than before I first started. So Paul found his call when he was going to a place called Damascus. Jesus met or met him. In his encounter with Jesus, he received a personal call that Paul is for the Gentiles, that he will preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Calling is discovered in a place where you don't want to continue to live. Calling is discovered in a place where you are angry because you don't want to continue on in poverty. You don't want to continue on sickness. The discovery of the calling of God is when you have the hatred anointing for poverty, for, for, for evil. And when you are hateful against sin, hateful against sickness, you will be mightily anointed by God and you will be authorized to destroy the work of evil in your life. Glory. 
So the touch, touch of peace, he does not want that we are sick, that we contracted disease. It, it, it uh, pain God. It hurts God when we are unable to do his bidding. And then in, now if you discover your, your calling and you believe your calling, Paul believed his calling. So the second truth, the value of patience and belief. The value of patience and belief. Now, once you find your calling, it will not come easy because the calling is a personal work between you and God. No man can teach you about the calling. I cannot teach you and I will never try teaching you your calling. It is you who will need to discover your calling. So it is a personal work of every person. So in 2 Timothy 1.12, 2 Timothy 1.12 for the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him again, against that day. You must be fully persuaded. What is persuaded? That you believe. Everything that the Word of God says about you. Persuaded means that I cannot be, I cannot be swayed away from what I believe. Persuaded means that no forces can obstruct me in what I believe. I will continue on. I will press onward. I will continue on forward. And nothing shall ever separate me from the calling. Because I will never allow that somebody will obstruct my way in fulfilling my calling. It will be a fight. Because I will not Allow that any man, any evil, any demon spirit will ever obstruct me. I will continue on the authority. I will continue on the power that I receive from the Lord. Because I am fully persuaded that I have the calling. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. There will be suffering. There will be times that uh, we sh might feel all alone as though neglected by God. But faith must arise that we are always loved by God. That His plan and design for me and for you is the good things of life. Not poverty because Jesus died. So that he can free us through his death and through his blood. He has redeemed us so that he has emancipated us. He has freed us from Satan, from sickness, and from poverty. I also suffer these things. For this cause, and what is that cause? That cause is the calling. He discovered his call and he is doing the calling. And when we discover our calling and do it, I want you to know that that calling will not come as easy as everyone thought. Jesus said, if you Leave believing me, you will be persecuted, you will be reviled. So doing the calling is not 
an easy thing. Because Paul said that I still suffer. Paul who is an intelligent man, Paul who is a powerful man in society of his time, and yet when he found the calling and he pursued the calling, there is suffering because his former associates, partners, and friends, they are the one that is persecuting him. Close friends are persecuting him. So it's not easy. It will always be with persecution. But Paul continued to live according to his calling. And his testimony is this, I am not ashamed. Though I am persecuted, though I am charged falsely of things that I never uh, did, though I was charged as liar, but I am speaking the truth, I am not ashamed for those or by those false accusers. I will continue on. I will not be hindered. I will continue on. I, I will not be obstructed. And I will never allow someone to obstruct me. And I will never allow any insinuation or thoughts from any person about my calling. Because it is all I who know my calling. So your calling is your personal discovery. When you receive the call... You will desire nothing. You will be addicted to your relationship with God. Things of the earth will be lightly respected by those who continue on the calling of God. So we understand now. So we shall continue on. I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed. So he honored Jesus more than anything else. He gave glory to the Father more than anything else. He always pleases the one whom he will be accountable on the assigned day of judgment. And in Hebrews 6 verse 10, in pursuing the calling, you might be hampered, you might be uh, tired. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward his name. And that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. For the calling... To be fulfilled, we must look at the word of God as silver and we must look at people as gold. Why silver and gold? Because the right calling is ministering to God. My calling is to do his will and to finish his work. And the will of God is for all of people to come into repentance. That is the entire will of God. Every person will come into the knowledge that it is only Jesus Christ who is the only Savior, and come to repentance, a change of mind. That is the will of God. And I receive salvation, but I will not stop and will never stop in salvation because that salvation will have to flow through me because many need salvation. So my work after I receive salvation is to inspire people, to encourage people, 
to persuade people that there is only one way to the Father's heart, and He is Jesus. And in so doing, in obeying, there will be friendship that will have to be severed. You have to separate from many friendships that will not add to the fulfillment of your calling. You might have to change job that will not be beneficial for the strength of your calling. So this is not a small and comfortable matter. This is a matter of a decision that will be strong. Not soft, but strong. So sometimes Paul thought that he is all alone and by himself. Paul thought that God has neglected him, but never, never, never. God forget. That is why Paul, this is the testimony of Paul as he is writing to the Hebrews because the Hebrews, the Hebrew Christian, they are so much muck. Let us see what is happening to the life of the Christians in the book of Hebrews in 1032. This is how they were treated. Hebrews 10.32 But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. So what are the kind of life or the level of life of the Christians during the Hebrew area or the Israel time, the Jews that became born again? They fight a great fight of afflictions so true christianity is fighting against all afflictions after you were illuminated you endured a great fight of afflictions and then in verse 33 partly whilst you were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions and partly while you become companions of them that were so used. So the Christians will be the only people that will be together no matter what. The Christian has to stick to each other so that they will be able to overcome. What shall they overcome? They were made a gazing stock. They are, people are laughing at them. People are abusing them. So they need to band together so that they will be strong. Because no person that does not receive Christ as their Lord will ever understand our faith and belief. And then in verse 34, For you had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Why is it that they were not affected by all those sufferings, tests, and trials? Because their mind is focused in heaven. So it's focus. It's the vision of heaven that will see a true Christian and win over against all odds. In Colossians 3, 1 and 2, this is our victory. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. So our mind must be focused on things above. Glory. And in verse 2, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. 
So a genuine Christian hold lightly to the things of the world and hold tightly to the things of heaven. In John 14, verse 3, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. This must be the content of our mind. That where Jesus is, there we will be also. We will be blessed in this life and much more blessing after the life hereafter. We must be very zealous in our faith. So let us go back to Hebrews 16. As I have mentioned, sometimes you will feel all alone because no one will understand you, even your loved ones sometimes cannot help you because they will not understand what we are thinking. They will never understand what we are under, undergoing. So it is a personal relationship with Jesus. Nobody, no person can encourage us. Encouragement means that we are courageous inside. And encouragement comes from God. Just continue on. I will never leave you. Just continue on. I will never fail you. I will always be near you. I will always protect you. I will always preserve you. So it is you who will matter the word. M-U-T-E-R. It is you who will speak the word to yourself. That I am loved. That God is preserving me. That God has given me authority and power and no evil can ever defeat me. Never. It has to be a strong, powerful stand. Because that is truth. God is not unrighteous. He will never forget us. He will never neglect us. Because his good thoughts, his peace, his thought of peace is that he desired that you will have a good future. That he desired that you will be free from poverty. He desired that he will provide, he will supply, he will meet all our needs. That is the heart of God. And I believe that. So though I pass through test of luck, though I pass through the pathways of isolation, I will still believe God because I will be encouraged by the truths of the word of God. And I will be lifted up inside and I will continue on because most of the time we are all alone by ourselves. God is not unrighteous to forget your word and labor of love. So we have to saturate our day-to-day -day activities with the work and labor of love. And what is the work and labor of love? You will no, not do any harm to someone that you are praying. And to be successful in intercession for others, we have to identify ourselves with the one we are praying for. Do, God will not forget your work, your labor of love. So the intention is always love. And love always desire the good of whom he loved. So when I pray for someone, I desire his goodness. I desire his prosperity. I desire his good health to flow in his life which you have showed toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And then, thirdly, you must have 
a tripartite unity. First, know your personal calling do and stick to it. Then second, learn the value of patience and belief. And then thirdly, maintain a tripartite unity in your total being. What is this unity that I will be talking about? It is the heart, the mind, and the mouth. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And the passageway or the doorway to the heart is through our eyes. And what we see is transported to our mind. And what we think it will be transported to our heart. Integrity, the simplest definition, definition of integrity is that I speak what I meant. Flattery is speaking something and thinking another thing. Integrity is speaking what is the content of your heart? So if my heart and my mind and my mouth is united, evil will be away from me. Because he will never be able to do any temptation because my heart, my mouth, and my mind is in unison and in agreement with one another. So again, I believe that we shall always be victorious, no matter what the test and what the trial is. Always remember the value of waiting and seeking, seeking and waiting. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So as long as we serve the Lord, as long as we serve our, serve our people, then God will never forget those good works. And lastly, in Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So if we are not faint-hearted and to avoid weariness, we have to develop in the area of patience. Because the waiter, the thing that will transpire internally is patience. A patient man is a powerful man. A patient woman is a powerful woman. So the value of waiting and seeking until we receive what is promised. So today, I believe that once you know your calling and do it, then God will be with you until the fulfillment of that call. It will be Wonderful because God will always add up, add up, add up the blessing after the blessing, blessing after blessing, success after success, victory after victory. So you will be swallowed up by the power of Jesus Christ and you will be invincible and no one can ever defeat you. Let us pray. Father, Thank you so much that once again your spirit wonderfully expound the truths of the value of seeking and waiting by first believing until we know the calling. And thank you for the power to persist and to insist and to demand that what we believe, it shall be given to us. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Naturally speaking, in this world, there are so many perplexities. There are so many that our mind cannot grasp or understand. But thank God that Jesus has an open hand and arms and asking and waiting, Come to me and I will give you rest. Are you bothered? Are you heavy laden? What, what is your problem? Your spouse? Your children? Your business? And the most thing that a person can do is worry, be afraid, be fearful. But Jesus is willing to alleviate and free us from worry, from anxiety, and from bothersome and troublesome thoughts. So I will pray for you so that there will be a healing of memories and a deliverance from the past. Because the past that you cannot forget will be the past that will be like a ghost and it will haunt you as long as you will not do a mighty decision to get out of the past, free yourself from the past, and start living in the present for a better and good future ahead. So I will pray, Father, there are thousands or maybe millions that watch this program. And right now, as they were blessed by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, through the previous topic, then I now speak of healing of memories. That everyone that is troubled and bothered by yesterday will be freed from the memories of the past. In the name of Jesus, let them be freedom. Let there be freedom. Let there be deliverance. And let their mind be opened to a good present and a good future. Bless them with your wisdom. Bless them with your word. And bless them with courage. And anoint them to have a will that is so strong to continue on this wonderful, wonderful startup of their life. In Jesus' name, prosper. Amen.
you may write us at Post Office Box 4135 Manila, Philippines. For your prayer request, call or text us at these numbers. We will pray for you that your problems and needs will be answered by God. You may also visit our website at www.gregdurante.com and like us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We invite you to attend our Sunday service at Biaya ng Diyos Christian Fellowship, 2nd Floor, Medicor Building, Ortigas Avenue, Green Hills, San Juan. It's a great day to live. If you are blessed with this program and have the desire to support Greg Durante Ministries to continue on expanding the reach of our TV broadcast, you may deposit your donations to the following accounts listed on your TV screen. Jesus is Jehovah. You have the power to decree. Amen. Amen. Sa iyong gabi na walang pag-aalilangan na ikay tatanggap ng kagalingan ng ibang puri ng sakit o karamdaman yan, 